everyone. This is Beth from Art by Bedell. Thank you for joining me. I thought I'd jump in here today and give you the heads up on what our challenge is going to be for February. Our challenge is going to be fodder, collage fodder. It doesn't have to be just for collaging. Maybe you just like to add one piece to your background for your focal point on your journal page. I like to do collage so I'm going to give you some techniques for some Mami Gami, which has been my new favorite of late. And then for the rest of the month, I have other favorites that I like to do for collage fodder. So I'm going to give you some more um, quick little videos to show you what I'm up to. In the meanwhile, I would like to challenge you to do what you like to do with collage fodder or layering papers whatever you want to call it for in your journal and post them the pictures in the group art by bedell community group and use your own techniques and share them or give somebody else's a try mine you can give mine a try if you want you can give Maybe somebody else will post something and you're like, okay, I want to do that. So do that and post it. Let's let's get busy posting pictures and getting interactive. Anyhow, the Mami Gami is no more than a piece of paper. Here is a piece of coffee stain copy paper that you take in your hands and you crinkle it up. And it's called kneading. And you do it over and over and over again until the paper doesn't sound like paper when you're crinkling it. Now, if you listen, kind of loud and it gets to this point and it's like nice and soft the paper as you'll see now that I've just crinkled this one as you'll see anyhow it gets smaller I like to add a little bit of coconut oil to my hands I'll just take some out here get a chunk I usually get something and scrape it and rub it in my hands and then that makes the process go faster and it's better for your hands and it helps the paper to get smoother and it just is, is a good idea they have other kinds of oil that they recommend I just like the coconut oil now when I'm starting on a piece of paper I'll start by bringing my edges in first gently and squeezing them that helps to prevent some of the tearing around the edges now it's bound to happen that you're going to get some tearing and then what you want to do is gently open it back up and see I already have tear and then start all over again and keep doing it and doing it and doing it until it gets a softer sound to it until the paper starts feeling soft and then you get this yummy layering paper I like to use it pretty much anywhere you'll see here I have a piece on my journal cover that's mommy gami and you'll see also more of the textures that I like to use for collage fodder you can see let's see I have taken my mommy gami paper and I punched flowers out with it and I made some flowers for my journal with it and there's layering here I tend to really, really, like I say, I'm in love with it right now. You can color your Mami Gami paper. I took a black ink pad or some black acrylic ink wash, whatever you want to do, whatever color you want to do, and color it. You can stamp on your paper before you wrinkle it all up, and then you'll get some designs in here that'll be all broken up. So this is coffee stain copy paper. Next up, I did just a plain piece of wrapping tissue and here's what I ended up with and it's just all crinkly and nice and oh my gosh it's the texture is just way too cool for that then I took some of my jelly prints here's a jelly print and this one was like that one and I did all the crinkling with that and look at look at that look how it changes and and just how pretty that'll be in layers. Oh my goodness, I took a piece of um, 
sheet music here, some of the old paper. Now you have to be a little bit more careful with the old paper. And you'll see that this is where it was folded and so it ripped. This is the softest. Out of all of them, this is the softest. But like I say, just be careful. So there's your plain piece of sketch paper. And you'll get something that looks like our coffee stain paper. How about a map, guys? Take a map. Crinkle it all. Look at the crinkles. Look at how that has changed. And the colors actually kind of the ink from the map as I was doing that kind of bled a little. So it gave everything a blue tone. I like this backside. Really, really nice. Here is newsprint. Again, this one's really easy to do because the paper is really, it's, if it starts and your paper is more pliable at the beginning, you're going to get a softer paper in the end. Some of the papers that are more crinkly and tougher to do, it takes more work for them. Here's an old piece of ledger paper that had some writing on it, and I did one of those. Look at that. Okay, how about dictionary paper? This was really easy to do. The paper was very, very pliable. And here's some dictionary paper like this that turned into like that. And again, the black ink kind of smeared around and it's not quite as white here. I love it. It's beautiful. Here we have some magazine papers. This one, okay, it did not want to crinkle. But I, I crinkled it. I didn't apply anything to it on purpose because I wanted to show you the difference. So there's a lot of rips and tears in it. So take your paper like this that is hard to do and spritz it lightly, just lightly, both sides. Let it set a minute or two. You're going to get this instead of something all torn up like this. And this is much softer. But look how, isn't that cool? It goes from this to this. Backside. How about some black and white paper out of book print? There we go. Then we have vellum. Of course, we all know vellum is really, really crisp paper. Spritz it gently, both sides with water. Let it set. And then you can do all the folding and whatever. You have to be careful doing the corners first and getting them in there. And then you can... Um, Fold it up. This one I didn't spritz, and so it started to crinkle. So, uh, excuse me, it started to get holes in it. So I quit because I knew it was just going to turn, it was just going to all break up. I spritzed it. I ended up with one hole on this piece of vellum. Now, what happens is, as this dries, it gets stiff again. So you have this really cool piece of paper here and here, and that's how your vellum turns out. And look how small that it ended up getting also. And then we have another piece of ledger paper that I did. And if I went more with this, because you can see along the outside edges, it's not crinkled as much as in the center. If I continued more with this, it would get even softer. How about using some wallpaper? There we go. It didn't shrink much. I think there's a lot of sizing in some wallpaper, but it got all these really nice crinkles. Now, Every piece of paper is going to turn out a little bit different, but it's all going to have the same effect where it's got all of these crinkles. This one is a piece of packaging. If we take a wash over this, like um, whether it's acrylic wash or whatever, and use brown on it, it's going to look like leather, guys. So there's, and this was easy to do because it's pretty pliable too. So there's my Mommy Gami. There's my techniques for my Mommy Gami. Use some oil on your hands. It'll help your hands. It also helps the process of the paper better. And if your paper is really rigid, use a little bit of water. Don't soak it because if you soak it, then your paper is going to be, it's just going to rip all up for you. You just want to add a little bit to it. So I've shown you how you can use it in your journals. Um, do some die cutting with it. Make some flowers. Color it up different colors, use this as accent pieces. Go for it, guys. Let's see some different mommy gummy papers that you have. So we'll see you over in the group with your ideas for some fodder for your journals. See you soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.